what's going on everybody this is lady luck here again all right i came across this video here of um this young man earn online i think it's his channel name and i saw this video and i just think it's very very touching heartfelt and genuine and sincere and you know the fact that Novatech is a scam by law and federal definition and you know precedence that's already been set for scams like this it's not hard to see that and i think a lot of people just don't want to you know accept the fact that they're caught up in a scam especially the promoters and all these people that act like they're just brainwashed into a cult which is disgusting to say the least but you know you can't you know try to go about this trying to persuade people that are brainwashed and they're just pretty much at a point of no return and then those who not only perpetuate Novatec is a scam but then they're on other platforms that are all MLM scams they don't want people to see them as the criminals that they are stealing money but they are it has nothing to do with capitalism it has nothing to do with um somebody being good at sales nope you're perpetuating a scam bottom line you don't you don't have to like it but you are so that's how i see it i don't try to sit and try to convince someone that is completely brainwashed or they just kind of they don't want to feel the reality the pinch of reality that they've been caught up in a scam so that's why i don't make my videos as if I'm trying to convince them. I make my videos as if there's someone who's new to this that doesn't know or is not aware that Novatech is a scam. My videos are to help those who may not be aware of it, who may still be tapped into some form of reality and may want to look at things from a logical and financial stance and legal stance. And those videos are for them. You know, it's for those who they keep recruiting into the scam. These stupid promoters that keep trying to draft people. And not just, just this scam, like I said. Many of them are all in other MLM scam platforms dealing with crypto. But I, like I've been saying, legitimate investment companies, le legitimate financial, you know, institutions, banks, even a legitimate crypto platform don't get cease and desist orders. It doesn't happen. This is a scam because the law has to find it to be a scam. And you can go to a federal court and tell a federal judge all that nonsense you're saying in these videos that you're posting on YouTube, making it available to the public for some reason, like wire fraud is not a thing. You can say all that if you want to, but when you go into a courtroom, You'll never, ever be able to tell that to a, a federal judge's face. And I know that for certain because I know that's how all of these cases turn out. These people that sit here try to be hard and, oh, we're going to stay Novatech strong. Wait till they get named in a cease order or a list of charges. Or the FBI comes knocking at their door saying, hey, we got a subpoena to confiscate all of your electronic devices because of wire fraud charges. What did that happen? Then they're going to be walking around crying. I can't believe this is happening to me. Like, oh, shut up. You saw that coming. <laughs> but I, I hope that those like myself who speak out against these scams and just doesn't want people to be scammed, that you remember that if you're at least helping one person, if you're reaching out and, and you're getting to one person, that to me is satisfying enough to continue to do this. And I know that there are several people, including those stupid pettions, because that little girl watched my videos. I know for sure that several people have seen my videos and they have, some of them even left comments saying, I appreciate you putting out this information because it's not just a matter of just reading and looking up things and researching the information. Sometimes it involves having someone that can help you break down the information on a, a very simple level. You know, everybody doesn't think to go to, uh, you know, an attorney website or call an attorney or, you know, 
get consultation from an attorney. Like everybody doesn't think to do that, but you know, you do have people that will watch some of these videos and they'll be like, you know, the way you explain it is very easy or simple, or it's just genuine. You know, I can tell you, you, you just want to help people. And like this young man here, I saw his video and I just said, he's, he's so passionate about this. He just wants to keep people from being scammed. To me, that just still shows that there's some parts of humanity that still has a soul. And it's baffling to me how this stupid scam like Novatech and this self-proclaimed fake reverend have all these other so-called alleged Christians, but most of them lack a soul or a conscience because they don't care about taking money from somebody else. There's no trading, no proof of trading, which is why they keep getting cease and desist orders. None of their securities or alleged securities are even registered. And they think they're above the law and above reproach. Well, that goes against every fundamental belief of a true Christian. And let's not forget that you're violating two good commandments in all this nonsense, this scam. Thou shalt not lie and thou shalt not steal. But yet these fake Christians sit here and forget about practical <laughs> scriptures and practical commandments and laws that help protect people from having their money stolen from them. It's like they just dismiss that. You can't pick and choose which laws or scriptures of the Bible you want to uphold and adhere to. You can't. That's Because that's hypocrisy. And at some point, it catches up to you. If you check out all my videos, I tell you all, I've been very consistent throughout and I have not missed because I know how this goes. I know how this ends as well. I also know why your stupid cult leader, that little petty on that little girl, is not saying anything because it's called wire fraud. I told you all she watched my videos. And the last time she put out a message, I clowned her so bad, I, I really thought it was very funny. For her to talk about bringing some rapture that's worse than God or something. Nonsense and that rain shower and thunderstorm. With all that nonsense she was saying and at the end of that video when I flat out said, you also have the right to remain silent. You might want to start exercising that right. Guess what she did? Started exercising that right. Because she knows you can't, you cannot defend yourself against wire fraud. Knowing what the parameters are for that charge, how can you defend yourself with it? You can't say, well, I, I told people I wasn't a financial advisor and I wasn't giving financial advice. The judge will not care about that. Because he's going to say that has nothing to do with wire fraud. It's not a predicate to being exempted from wire fraud. It's not even one of the four parameters that meets the standard of a, a wire fraud charge. Just because you said that does not mean that you're safe from being charged with wire fraud. That's not how that works. So I do my video still because I know that there's at least one person listening and hell, she even listens and watches them. And I know that there's, you know, one person out there that's being helped, you know, that's getting some gainful information. But sometimes we forget about the human aspect of it. I can't change the mind of somebody that's embedded into this cult-like mentality if they're willing to cut off their own family members and friends that they've known for years over a stupid cult from some dumb scammers and owners that will never ever represent them in a court of law, will not even help them get an attorney if they get charged or if they get named in a cease order, them dumb petions are not going to come to their rescue. And that's something they're going to have to learn the hard way. But there are a lot of people out there who just, they want to know the truth. They want to hear a sound, stable voice. And they want to hear, you know, people that are genuine and passionate about helping others and keeping others from being scammed. And like I said, you know, his video is very heartfelt. And it's not hard to pick up the fact that he is passionate and he just doesn't want people to be hurt. So... I wanted to check out his video. Um, I ain't trying to copy nothing. I just wanted to react to it and check it out because I think this is a message that people really need to hear. 
and hopefully, you know, maybe there are people who have never seen his videos, but they've seen mine. And, you know, this will give them some inspiration and, you know, just know earn online that your, you know, your words do not go in vain. But let's get to it. And hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone who watching this video around the world. My name is Team Wider, and you, of course, as always, on the Earn Online channel. Definitely one of the best places where you can find absolutely different kind of the ways how to make money online. And listen, today, of course, we're gonna speak about the Nova Tech, as you've seen on the preview, and uh, we're gonna provide for you details about the top leaders. You know, some of the people I'm not gonna call their names, but. Guys, you just must understand that that what's going on right now with the no attack, it's like a train to nowhere. Yeah, the train to nowhere. And so many mm -hmm. people ride into nowhere because they don't know what's going to be. And uh, I really don't like this type of the situation when the people is uh, struggling. Yeah, and they are just waiting for something. Once the mm -hmm. trading account going to be unlocked, when they can withdraw their money. So all of that stuff is um, it's really sad. And some of the leaders, mm -hmm. you know, if we, if we can call them leaders, they still promote no attack. they still saying that they're... Yeah, it's the same thing I've been saying. Basically, so far, he's just saying that it's sad to see that these scam promoters are still promoting people into this stupid scam. And at the end of the day, none of them are going to be able to handle any charges that come their way with wire fraud. They're not going to have an excuse when they stand before a federal judge in a federal court of law. They think that this is, how, that this is a walk in the park. And they're going to be sadly mistaken and they're going to see that the hard way. But so far, he's just basically saying that there are people who just need and want their money. Like, same sentiment I've expressed. And you have no idea what these people are going through. And these uplines are ignoring them and don't care. And then you have these scam promoters that are still promoting people into this scam and stealing their money. Knowing that this scam is about to collapse and dissipate. Everything, every scam doesn't rough pull the same way. Like I said, there's precedence for these scams. You can look at court cases of previous scams and how they were litigated in court and the fines and sentencing that each of these scammers received from Charles Ponzi himself to Bernie Madoff to the chick with their nose to Sam Bakeman Free to all these other scammers out here that have in run that have existed. And each of those cases has some unique factors to it that they, they didn't all rug pull the same way. Bernie Madoff pulled his scam off for over 20 years. Over 20 years that man pulled off that scam. So they don't all rug pull the same exact way. That's why you need to read case laws and try to get an understanding of the pattern and the characteristics of a scam and how it's legally defined and litigated. Everything going to be all right. That platform is sustainable, and uh, it's really sad, guys. It's really sad yeah. because so many new guys who are going to join right now, they're going to be in the failure. They were mm -hmm. going to lose the money because the I money. already recorded many videos about the no attack, uh, where I provide the information about the platform, where I provide information about the CEO, the Cynthia uh, Petion guys. So you can check all of that information in the description there's so many so many videos so i don't know mm -hmm. how to explain by the different word uh by the different words to the people that guys this platform is the ponzi scheme is the same like all of mm -hmm. that what we see on the market today like coin market bull like vertic united uh, then cash effects and all of them have beginning and the end guys mm -hmm. beginning and the end and so he named three other platforms Coinbase, something bull and Vorti you know i don't keep up with all of them because they come up all over the place i mean there are videos on youtube where you have criminals and that's what i call them telling you how to actually create cryptocurrency but people think that that's actually legitimate it's not that's not how currency is created and implemented into our economy into our financial system regardless of whether you think cryptocurrency should be just digital cash or a security asset it still stood should be no matter what legitimized and valued on a standard level that way people aren't being swindled by scammers who are creating fake cryptocurrency who aren't creating fake scams to take people's money in exchange 
for some fake crypto that doesn't even exist, or if they have crypto out there, they're not valuable. They're not worth anything because some 20 year old punk kid created it on a computer. <clears throat> and he just sold you a pipe dream. He sold you the idea or concept. Oh, that this is going to be the next coin ever. You know how many crypto coins out there? You know how many types of crypto coins out there? I don't take people seriously when they can't tell me the algorithm on how to create Bitcoin. But they want to say that this crypto is legitimate. Well, you don't know how it was created and how it's legitimized. So I can't take you seriously. And all of these platforms he just named, they all do the same thing. They create some fake crypto. They put it out there. They tweet about it. They get people to come in with all this money. And then it just, they take other uh, depositors and investors money from them. And then next thing you know, pyramid schemes and Ponzi scams are not designed for everyone to benefit from it. It's only designed for the people at the top, the developers, the top investors, the people that go in saying, yeah, we're going to go ahead and promote this out. And then we're going to sell our fake crypto and get some money for it. Even though they want to believe that the U.S. dollar is dropping in value, but yet they're still taking your U.S. dollars in exchange for fake crypto to make themselves wealthy. That's the irony and the hypocrisy in that to me. But either way, I digress. Um, you have these same patterns that happen and then they end up collapsing because there's no crypto. There's no trading platform. They're not registered with the SEC. They're not legitimate. They're not authentic. And people are just putting their money into this stuff. And the last thing you want is to lose money that you need to sustain and live. Because you were told that, oh, this crypto is so valuable. Here's where we have to have responsibility in our research, though. Look it up. Ask them what's the name of this coin. And Google it right in front of that person. Look it up. And you will see if that coin is even real, if it exists. And then see if other companies are investing in this particular crypto coin. If you don't see that coin anywhere else, more than likely, this moron that's telling you to buy it just came up with it out of nowhere. Because it more than likely won't even exist. And there are more cases to prove that than there are of platforms that are real, but yet they're not, they're not pushing legitimate crypto. Most likely the crypto and the platform are all fake. It doesn't exist. It's just someone telling you this cryptocurrency is going to be the next big thing. And then they get people to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on it. And then they leave them high and dry. Once they sell their so-called crypto that doesn't exist and they get all this money in return in us dollars. The one thing people keep saying is becoming devalued, but yet you want U.S. dollars in exchange for fake crypto. Why not get some other form of currency? How about that? Why not have people give you some pesos or some Swiss francs or something? I'm just curious. Some yen. Why, why U.S. dollars? Oh, that's right, because it's still valuable. Got it. And um, If you're not quitting there. Uh, that period of the time when you need to quit so of course you're gonna lose the money so yep. the same stuff what is gonna be with the no attack the same stuff gonna be with the cmb the same stuff gonna be with the vertic united and uh, so sad that so many guys who who are believers they invest everything you know yep. because leaders they provide information that guys this is the legit platform they're gonna be paying for us they provide the roadmap platform they're gonna be paying for us they provide the roadmap with the so many years like 2024 2025 2026 but in mm -hmm. the end of the day once the company exits scam they just start to asking their leaders so you told us that platform gonna be working mm -hmm. for the many years what's going on right now and after that leaders will gonna tell you hey listen just did you see that there was the disclaimer about the risks so just you should read that so we don't know that what what's and let me help you all out. Um, in my main video that I did about the security, the cease and desist orders video is like the one that's over two hours long. Um, I actually pulled up Novatech's stupid policy that is no longer effective because they keep changing the parameters, mind you. And there's nothing in there about risk. They don't, they don't advertise risk because you can't advertise risk and then say that you're promising people three to 4% every week. 
You're not even giving people the perception that they won't get paid every week. You're literally doing the opposite of that. How can you tell someone that there are risks to this where you may not get paid, but your websites, your platforms, your posts, your messages, your dumb scam promoters, their websites, their YouTube profiles, Larry, and these policies all say that you get 3 to 4% every week. So how do you tell someone? It's very contradictory to say there are risks to this. You may not get money. Well, that's not what any of your stuff in writing says. That's not what your stupid scam promoters are saying. They're not saying that you won't get money every week. As a matter of fact, if you go on a couple of their YouTube channels under their bio or about in the description, they actually have 3 to 4% every week. Why put that up if you want people to believe that these return on investments is not guaranteed? Legitimate investment companies don't say that dumb crap because it's not financially or mathematically feasible. Your compound calculator is somehow rigged and designed to give people over a 360 something percent APY. How? How do you come up with 300 and something percent? You would literally need all the money on earth. But yet and still, you want people to believe that there's some risk. Well, that's not what your stupid compound calculators say. The people that created your dumb website and the programming, they knew it didn't link to anything. It's not connected to a server or a database of any sort. But yet and still, you still tout on your websites, on your scam promoters, social media platforms and description areas. That they are guaranteed to get 3 to 4% every week. Even if it's just commission and recruitment. It's still illogical to even put that out there. When you cannot guarantee that a person is going to get all of that money. Especially when it comes down to over 300% APY every year. How in the hell? Having it happened. But in the fact guys that leaders who promote this kind of the platforms i'm just saying to you guys that you must to transcribe the information that people should invest only that amount which they're ready to lose because mm. what you will gonna tell them after that no attack will gonna exit scam what you will gonna tell them that you know that something was wrong with the platform something was wrong with the traders uh they was have some issues which they cannot afford who the traders or what you're gonna tell yeah, who so the traders? They can no through all of that uh, challenges or, 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 or just what? Who who the traders? They don't have any employees. Novatech doesn't have any employees. There, there are no traders. Their platform is not even programmed to be connected to some external server or database funneling in real data about any trading whatsoever. None of their securities are registered. So... You can't blame any losses on the stock market when you don't want to be registered to do business in the stock market. When you are sitting here saying, I don't want the SEC to regulate me. And this is a crypto space. It's not the same as a stock market. Well, then why do you use the stock market as a dumb excuse when people don't get their money? This is completely aside from the stock market has nothing to do with Novatech, period. Nothing. They're not registered to have anything to do with it. They're not supposed to be selling security assets at all. Cryptocurrency was actually created and designed to be digital cash. And somehow it's turned into a stupid security asset that can be easily manipulated and recreated by any person with a computer. But all of that has nothing to do with the, the stock market. So why use the stock market as an excuse? It's hypocritical. And the people that say that are dumb. They're dumb, they're stupid, they're dumb. And you have every right to call them that. Call them a moron. And then make sure that they are charged with wire fraud. And then they have to explain themselves to a federal judge. So that's really sad because many people, they taking the loans from the banks. So many people, they 
uh, selling their cars, selling yep. their houses to invest the money in the yep. platforms like Novo Tech. And after that, when they realize that platforms is the exit scam, they start to be getting crazy exactly. because all the life is going get is going down. When the person yep. he realized that he lost, yeah, he lost and he lost that amount which he's uh, or yep. she doesn't matter. They are not let, not ready to lose. Yeah, and this is really it, it's scary. Yeah, because some of the people they lose a relationship after that. Some mm -hmm. of the people they go into the suicide. I just really uh, telling you guys that yep. invest only that amount which you. Yeah, this is this is not even a joke. There are people that have committed suicides and scams where they've lost tens of thousands of dollars, let alone hundreds of millions of dollars. Bernie Madoff, one of his sons committed suicide because of all of the, the stuff that collapsed around his father's, you know, Ponzi scam. One of his sons committed suicide. That's not... I, I can't make that up. You can look it up and research it. And the stress that these scams induce upon people and their families and their lives, and not to mention those who have cut people off because of a dumb scam, it, it goes beyond just making money. Now it just turns into greed. Now it turns into this, this state of mind that is very dangerous. And if you lose... Most people don't know how to handle it. They don't know what to do because they're, they've lost, not only they've lost money, but they've also lost their relationships and their friendships. They've isolated themselves. They've been, you know, under this guise or spell of, you can't be around people that will say anything logical to you because math and numbers are still real. And they put themselves in these situations where when things fall apart and collapse and they lose all this money, they didn't just lose money. They lost part of themselves and who they are. They've lost relationships. They've lost friendships. They've lost their marriages. They've lost their kids. They've lost, they've lost their health, their sanity. And then if you're an upline or a scam promoter and you brought people into this, then the, the kickback from those people it's going to be outrageous because now those people will be coming to you saying, Hey, you brought me into the scam and you told me I would get X amount of dollars. Now I'm not getting anything. And so they know they don't know what to do. So they come up with this stupidity of saying, Oh, well, you should expect losses. Well, no, I don't because this is a scam. It was not a stock. This, this was not registered with the sec. This had nothing to do with a stock market. So no, none of your advertisements, none of your Zoom calls and presentations, none of that crap on your YouTube profile said anything about me losing any money. So when you add all of that up, it compounds together and some people just don't know how to handle it or process it. And people have committed suicide because of scams. Whole countries have lost their economic systems. Albania in the late 1980s, Lebanon is currently losing its economic state. Their economy is collapsing because of a Ponzi scam within their banking system. I did a video on that. You can't make this stuff up. Ponzi scams can destroy an entire country's economy and then no one wins. At the, I, now, I, now I ask you, how is that actually capitalism to the ding dong that said that I was anti-capitalist? How is it capitalism if the entire country's economy collapsed? Nobody wins. So how is that capitalism? And the person that said that does nothing but promote MLM scams. And yes, I left a comment on that video so it wouldn't be hard to figure out who it is. But don't come to me about something you can't define properly. If there is proof and evidence and precedence of countries losing their economy to Ponzi scams, and then no one wins. The only people that benefit are the ones at the very top, the highest level of corruption possible. Only a scammer or a person with a mentality to steal money thinks like that and tries to twist up the definition of capitalism itself. 
Yeah, where you don't have a whole economy at all? You think that's capitalistic? Oh my God. To loosen this kind of the platforms because if the leader, he will gonna tell you about the platform which paying the from 1.2% up to 1.8% a day, that this is the legit stuff, yeah? Like almost 2% a day and this mm -hmm. is the legit stuff and you don't have to worry about that. So just run from this guy because mm -hmm. this guy will gonna uh, put you in the in a really bad situation because right. you know when you are working in the project which is legit, it's really easy for you to like bring your family, to bring your wife, to bring uh, your friends, to bring your neighbors into this platform, and you are just easy can say that, hey yep. guys, listen, you can join, and uh, because you you're confident, yeah, you know exactly how the profit is generated from where and all of that. That's what we're doing uh, with the Legends Club in the Strike Team, which with, with the Legends Service. Right here, you cannot recommend this to the neighbors. You cannot recommend this uh, to your family and friends mm -hmm. because, guys, if tomorrow the platform will not gonna be working, what you will gonna say them yeah what you're gonna tell them hey listen right. you know I, I don't exactly. know I, I thought it's real but right now it's shut down exactly. and I don't know what to do just let's forget about it and maybe your friend he been invest his car yeah in this stuff in this rubbish and of course you're gonna make some referral commissions from from this but what he will gonna feel after that that's that's right. the question for all of right. the leaders who right now promoting no attack and saying right. hey you know this platform was working for the two years or three years and everything was working yeah guys but all this all this right. stuff with the daily ROI you know they have the beginning and the end and when you already know that platform is on the finish line when platform will, will gonna exit scam soon so why you still refer people mm -hmm. into this it is. stuff exactly. yeah, well, I, I even cannot exactly. say that this is the business you know in this rubbish why you that's the same thing I said I will not call Novatech a company I will not dignify this nonsense to be called a company because they're not it's a scam plain and simple there's no trading their platform is fake the website is fake if you want proof before the charges come out get someone that is a cybersecurity analyst people who understand basic programming to look at the programming codes, look at the source codes on their software, on their plating chat form, and they will look at the codes and be able to tell the functions that's typed in and what those codes are executed to do. So basically, if you want a table with a ticker on it, you have there's basic co programming or coding that you could type to put in a table or a chart on a website that basically repeats numbers over and over again in a closed loop cycle. That's what Novatech has, this scam. Everything about it is fake. From the website to the trading platform, none of the data that you are seeing is connected to any legitimate outside trading source. There's no real data coming in. There's no proof of trading. And then on top of that, you have the, the fact that the, the cease orders also have outlined and investigated the fact that there's no trading occurring. They cannot provide evidence that they're trading. So none of this stuff is real. All that's happening is that you're putting money into something that you think is going towards a cryptocurrency of some sort that may or may not even exist. And you're just getting a percentage of other people's money. It's that simple. It doesn't even need to be convoluted. The only thing that's happening is people putting money into something. They're controlling the money at the top, these stupid petions, and then they're just dispersing a percentage to everybody else. And not everybody. Certain people who, who I guess they pick and choose who gets money every week. I don't know. Because everybody doesn't get money now. They can't even be forthcoming about how often they're going to be giving out stolen money to people. It's not, it's not even just once a month. First they said every week. Now they say once a month. Now it's back to every week. They can't even be consistent with that. And everybody doesn't get money. And it's not designed for everybody to get money. That's how Ponzi scams work. They only benefit the people at the top. The newcomers get money because it's a, it's a hook system. They just do that to get you hooked and bait it in. 
to, to have you see, oh, you get money by doing X, Y, Z. You can put money in, you refer someone, then you'll get a percentage off. You'll get about two or three payments, but that's it. And like I said, the comments, the reviews, none of that is real. I literally exposed some of these scammers that created fake YouTube accounts and were posting up fake comments and reviews. And they don't just do it on YouTube. They do it on all of the social media platforms. They do it on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, those telegrams. They, they post up fake reviews on that fake website. It's not hard to do that when the website is fake. It's not hard to go on there for these programmers that they're paying to create these fake programs and uh, fake software and their fake platform to put in some fake reviews as well. It's not hard to do that. When you're used to seeing this and, and see how some of these comments are set up, the names even, are so basic and standard and rudimentary, it's not even funny. It's, it's screaming a fake review. It screams fake review. So this isn't something that if you have the eye to see that you you've seen at least understand scam baiting, <laughs> you know, kind of the vernacular and the, the, the type of naming for their profiles and the, the standard things they'll say and do is almost like a copy paste situation, but they're fake. All of this is designed to be a ruse a facade to have you think that is legitimate. And it's not, it's just not real. So, the only thing that's happening is that you're just getting a percentage of other people's money. They don't even need to tell you all that they're doing anything with cryptocurrency because it, it doesn't rely on any of that at all. Many of you have no idea if half of the crypto that you think you're buying is even legitimate because you won't look it up and Google it. And you certainly have no idea how much this stuff is worth. Most of you don't know how it's even created, let alone to authenticate it to say it's real. Just because someone tells you this crypto coin is worth 10 bucks per coin doesn't mean that it actually is. Says who? Based on what? Come on now. To invite them. And uh, so this is the really strange, yeah, and this is the really sad because so many people, yeah, will gonna lose the hope after that in this yeah. kind of the online business. Yeah, because when they don't know, yeah, when they are the newbies, so they believe some guy who was making the money, yeah, in this stuff. But after when they will gonna lose, so it's gonna be a really bad experience. And you know, it is what it is. And so in the end of the day, all the people they should go through some challenges. I understand that, but when you obviously understand that Novatech is the final line, when you see that trading account is locked and people cannot mm -hmm. withdraw the money from there, when uh, you see the daily ROI, basically not daily ROI, but ROI for the one week was them less than half mm -hmm. percent, like 005 percent. Why you still promote this project, this company, if we can say like that, and saying that this is real? So why? <laughs> yeah. The question is like this. Just think about it because those people they have the kids those people they have the families exactly. and they were gonna lose their money yeah they will right. lose their money in this rubbish right that's and you know what this is the part that to me that 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 really keeps me going with reminding people that Novatech is a scam and that at some point these dumb pedians are going to prison along with their scam promoters because they don't get a pass no, you do not. But this is why I continue to do this. Because there are people out there that are actually hurting. You can't tell someone you shouldn't invest what you can't afford to lose when you never told them they would lose anything to begin with. And when at the end of the day, none of this crap is related to a stock market because it's not a stock. The scammers want you to believe these promoters want you to believe that this is a deregulated space. It's not the same as the stock market. Well, don't blame it on the stock market when people don't get money. And don't use that as an excuse when your downlines come to you saying, I'm going to whoop your ass if you don't give me my money back. And then next thing you know, you want to cry, oh, I'm being threatened. No, no, this is the normal response from people that are losing their money that need their money back because they have families and bills and kids and, and homes. And they took out loans and they did all this stuff because they they thought that this was a decent investment. If you're looking up 
this stupid scam Novatech online. And all you're seeing online, what's in writing on these websites, on all of these social media posts, in their stupid fake policies and manuals and all this other stuff about how you're guaranteed at least three to 4% every week. Then you don't expect any losses. So you cannot tell people that when they don't get any money and then they lose out when this whole scam collapses. You baited someone in to get a bonus referral, but you didn't think about in the long run, if this person does not get their money, I don't know who's gonna be very angry with me and then may take it a step further and take my dumb behind the court because I done baited somebody into this knowing that they got three cease and desist orders. At this point in the game, you should not want to promote this stupid scam because three cease and desist orders is not a coincidence. And just because these stupid scam promoters are ignoring the cease and desist orders does not mean they don't exist. None of them would have the courage to go in front of a judge, in front of a federal court, in front of a jury, and explain anything. None of them will be able to do that. They're all cowards. And at the end of the day, they're not going to have any defense when they go to court because they were committing wire fraud and they were baiting people into a scam. And because nothing that they put out there, those stupid Zoom presentations, nothing that was put out there indicated anything about a loss. And everything, including that made up fake calculator, compound calculator, pointed towards somebody being guaranteed three to four percent every week. Whether you get paid that every week is irrelevant. The fact that you're guaranteeing this type of return on your interest, on your investment, those interest payments, the percentage that is set at every week, that's what you advertised. That's what you were stupid enough to put in writing. That's what you were dumb enough to put on your YouTube channels and in your description bios. You didn't put anything in there about a loss. Those stupid manuals don't have anything about that. So don't tell someone that when they've lost their money and they wanted to know why you pulled them into a scam that had three cease and desist orders and you withheld that information. That's another part of all, all of this that people forget about. You cannot mislead or withhold information that helps a person to make a decision regarding, a sound decision regarding their financial investments. You cannot willfully withhold the fact that this stupid scam has three cease and desist orders. That in and of itself is gonna get you into some legal trouble. And yes, I keep bringing up the law because none of these same punks that are scam promoters are gonna to wanna to stand in front of a federal judge. They'll be crying like a baby once they see that they've been named in a cease order, let alone some charges. They get their feds come knocking on their door and say, I need all your phones, your laptops, your computers, your fax machines. I want all of it for wire fraud. They're going to stand there and have a whole fit turned into a Ken or Karen. That's, that's how soulless some of these people are being towards this. And only scammers and crooks act like that. Most people that have a soul and a conscience would not even want to bring people into this stupid scam. Once you see that there are three cease and desist orders, at the very least, you will want to encourage your downlines to get out of it and pull their money out. And then you find a way to pull yourself out as well. They don't even want to have the responsibility of trying to help the people they brought into the scam to recover their funds. Don't put this on the line of a being a, a, a legitimate stock company. It's not. Don't use that as an excuse because it is literally irrelevant to the stock market. It has nothing to do with a stock or a stock market, to say the least. And many of these promoters about to stop finding out the hard way. I'm telling you. I'm just, mm, I even don't know what to I'll say. I think you. this is going to be the last video about the no attack because I'm just tired to explain over and over again for that people it who is, are yeah, protecting this stuff. Yeah, who are just saying, hey team, you are just a hater and uh, you don't like the no attack. You're fighting with no attack. I don't get no them comments no more. I'm being honest. I don't get a whole lot of them comments. Like I said, I don't mind exposing 
I put them fake scammers and them fake YouTubes up in, in a video in a hot minute. You know. And y'all cult that, that that stupid petty on that little girl watched my video, so I'm telling you. <laughs> you don't you don't wanna all my videos get tweeted to the SEC and the FBI. Do not think for a second that you're getting away with it. Because you're not. You're just not. There are a lot of people that have been hurt from this stupid scam. A lot of families, a lot of relationships destroyed. It, it, it's it's appalling. I'm like I said, you can't change the mind of somebody that's got this cult like mentality. You know, that's just understanding how cults operate and knowing how deep some people get into these types of cults. Their minds are just gone. So those are the people you cannot influence. And I personally don't try to try to deprogram someone's mindset that's caught up in this cult mentality. I don't try to deprogram them. The only thing I can do is hope that someone who may not understand or have a lot of information about the scam Novatech watches my video and then hopefully it helps them and deters them from investing in it because these stupid scam promoters are only in it to get a bonus referral and that's it. They're not in it to help somebody. I mean, it, it, it's a scam. It's not helping anybody. It's just stealing money. But they're not going to care about any of that. You know, and some of them are so embedded into it where even if they don't recruit people, they don't want nobody to take their money out. And they discourage that. Well, why should you care if somebody takes their money out? It's like you telling people that use the same bank you use. You know, you bank with North, uh, Bank of America. Hey, don't y'all pull no money out of Bank of America because, you know, you're supposed to let your money be in there and grow. Shut up. You're not the only person that bank at Bank of America. If, if, if Bank of America is a solid financial institution, why does it matter if somebody pulls out money from their own bank account? It's the same thing with this stupid scam. If it's a, if it's a real legitimate solid something, then it shouldn't matter if somebody wants to withdraw their money. But if you got to tell people not to do that and discourage people from withdrawing their money, that goes to show that you're proving the point that is not legitimate or stable. Because people need to have their money in there in order for it to be self-sustaining. It's not self-sustaining. It's totally dependent upon new money being brought into this nonsense or current members, cult members, who are already in it, reinvesting more money into it. The only reason why it's still going is because of the cycle of money. They're paying people something. But it's not designed for everybody to get paid. Every person is not going to get paid in this Ponzi scam. Many of you are going to go many weeks without getting any money out of this. Some of you will never ever see a check ever again. Or anything to your e-wallet or whatever. Some of you will never see another uh, ROI payment. You may have to get your state to issue a cease and desist with restitution just to get your money back until the payouts get their asses arrested. Guys, I'm not fighting with no attack. You know, I, well, I don't have I to, don't do, to fight with no attack. attack. No, I'm just telling that things, what is they really suck. going on right <laughs> now. Care. It is what it is. Nothing more and nothing people. less. So I'm just providing information how how it, it is guys. so i'm not just creating this information i'm not telling you the stories i'm just telling you that no attack is definitely the end and only you it's make a, a decision to stay with this and lose everything or yeah. quit you know as soon as possible as you can this is the time for for you basically to realize that you need to change the direction so i think that yeah the last video about the nova tech guys this is the rubbish this is the that project uh, where people are gonna lose the money 100 percent in the in the really really near future so just make your own decision so i just i don't want to make over or over again these videos about this stuff because I'm, I'm just really tired if you like lose the money go ahead invest mm. and lose if you don't like if you want something real oh my god well, I mean, like I said, you know, he is, like most people, is at a point where, you know, a lot of people are just frustrated about it. They're tired of talking about it because, you know, they they get those comments like that. They get people to my, you're just hating. I'm not hating on a scam. I don't hate on scams. That's stupid. 
I don't need to hate on a scam. I certainly don't need to hate on anybody being scammed. So, for all legal intents and purposes, I know that this is a scam. It's not, you know, that's that's not even a question. Why would I hate on people being scammed? That's not something to hate on. You're not making money. You're just getting a percentage of other people's money. And everybody is not even getting a payment or a percentage of other people's money. There's no real reason for any sound person that's in their right frame of mind to hate on a scam. It, it, it doesn't make sense. So it's understandable, but I can tell he's very genuine and, and passionate. So I just, I hate that, you know, he, and like a lot of YouTubers that have been speaking out against Novatech, you know, they want to stop doing these videos because they get those comments. I don't personally, I don't get a whole lot of those comments because I know what they are already. So it doesn't really phase me. And like I said, everything I have said has happened and is still happening. I said that they were going to be getting more cease and desist orders. They are. There's still more to come. They're under investigation. And even with the, like I said, with the silence that you all are getting from this stupid cult leader, honey. That little girl ain't going to say nothing to you all for what? She going to put herself in danger of, of getting more evidence piled against her for wire fraud. <laughs> That's why she ain't saying nothing. It, it, I said in the last video that she, that I reacted to of her record, her recorded message about her wrath of God and thunderstorm that she has the right to remain silent. She does. And that's exactly what she has done because even her own attorney and counsel, her defense counsel would tell her, you need to shut up. You're not helping yourself and you're certainly not going to make it easy on us to litigate or defend any of this nonsense. When you're constantly putting out messages that is yet again, piling up evidence of wire fraud against you. And many of these scammers, they end up getting hit with wire fraud charges because it's simply the, the method of, you know, the communication and the furtherance of a fraud of a scam, which is legally defined as fraud through any electronic means. That includes all your stupid videos, your recorded messages, any phone calls, any emails, text messages, the Zoom calls, the Zoom presentations, the stupid policy manual, your website, your social media posts, all of that stuff, all these dumb videos that people are using to, to promote this scam. All of that is evidence against you in the court of law. It's so stupid to put yourselves in a legal situation that you're not going to want to fight and defend. Trust me when I tell you that. Most of you will go in there crying like a big ass baby. I can't believe I am got charged with this. This is unbelievable. No, what's unbelievable is that you have over a hundred videos of you promoting the scam. And even when you learned that this was a scam or that at the very least, there were three active cease orders issued with restitution against this nonsense. You still kept promoting it and you ignored it. You mis misled people. You withheld information willfully about the cease orders and any other vital information that could help investors and depositors make a sound decision. And you still recruited people into this nonsense. Just because you ignored it doesn't mean that the law didn't exist. It exists. You just didn't care about it. You just ignored it because you knew telling people that these cease orders are real is probably going to deter many people from wanting to put money into a scam. But who says you got the right to steal people's money? Come on here. Just so you all can see that I wasn't making anything up about the intents and purposes of cryptocurrency. If you see in the highlighted portion of this screen here, um, it says, what is cryptocurrency? It is a digital currency, which is an alternative form of payment created using encryption algorithms. Do you all see that? That is what cryptocurrency was designed and implemented to be. It was never created to become a security asset. It was designed and created to be digital currency, an alternative form of payment, digital cash. The value was going to be created 
by way of using it as a as a form of transactional payment. By using it in stores and with, you know, banking systems adopting it as cash. By having companies issue cryptocurrencies as a form of payment and payroll to employees. At some point, cryptocurrencies as digital cash is going to ultimately fall in your lap. I'm not against that at all. I am against people using cryptocurrency to actually implement scams. Because what you're ultimately doing is selling money to people. You're selling some form of currency to somebody. So here's my question. When is the last time anybody needed to buy a Swiss franc in exchange for US dollars? What the hell did that need to happen? If you want another form of currency that exists in place already, you just go to an exchange center or a bank and whatever the exchange rate is, that's what you get for the value of the U.S. dollars that you have. That's what you would get in that form of currency that you want. $50 of U.S. Uh, dollars to have. So basically, whatever the equivalent is of U.S. dollars to Swiss franc, you just get that Swiss franc with that exchange rate. If you want $50 worth of Swiss franc, then what they're going to do is use that exchange rate to calculate how much Swiss franc to give you in exchange for 50 US dollars. When do you when did you ever need to buy Swiss franc with US dollars and then be told, "Hey, you could get an ROI on that Swiss franc that you can just simply exchange at an exchange center." Or with some financial institution. How? how? <laughs> you, you, you're basically selling people money like it's a stock or a bond. That's not how that works. It's just digital cash. You spend it and then it increases in its value. That's what all it's supposed to be. If done the right way. Digital crypto, digital currency or cryptocurrency is not a bad idea or concept when you're talking about advanced technology and the fact that as humanity, we're progressing more towards everything being electronic. That's almost inevitable. But to have cryptocurrencies be used in all of these stupid MLM scams as some form of unregistered security asset is what's really ruining the concept of cryptocurrencies it's not because it's being treated as the digital cash it was designed to be and being done the right way it's because it's actually been put into some flawed concept that this is something you purchase and invest in and get some sort of ROI payment off of when it's simply supposed to be digital currency you just exchange one form of currency to another form of currency Period. That's it. That's it. It, it. An unregistered security asset was the last thing that this cryptocurrency concept was supposed to become. And then as you have financial systems and merchants and businesses adopt cryptocurrency, then you have different nations using it as a currency for trading. So on a larger scale, they use it to buy goods, imported goods into their country. And that helps to increase the value as well. That's how the value of money actually fluctuates and grows. The more you print, the less valuable it becomes. So when you have all these stupid morons creating fake cryptocurrency, you have no idea if it's even valuable or not. Or legitimate. But it's only as valuable as the amount of money or the, the amount of methods it's used as far as a transaction. So if you buy $200 worth of groceries somewhere, hypothetically, and you use cryptocurrency, that cryptocurrency has now become worth at least 200 bucks Because you, got, you use that cryptocurrency in exchange for... $200 worth of goods or products or services because that's how money works so having said that 
to. And I have to give an official response to. He knows who the hell I'm talking about that said that I was anti-capitalistic when everything that I've said is actually based on capitalism in and of itself, especially regarding cryptocurrency. I don't care for salesmen or sales. I don't care for any of that. It's, it's not something I'm favorable towards. There's nothing wrong with earning profits or money. There's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, our economy is a, in the United States is a capitalistic, you know, society, a capitalistic economy. We, we, we depend on people buying and selling things to be able to earn money and to keep the value of our currency, you know, in its rightful place to where it benefits people where you're not spending $6 on a gallon of milk. Oh, wait, we're already doing that. Never mind. However, when it comes to capitalism, this is, and this is where the whole concept of this crypto thing, and I, I don't know what his point was with, with asking me about um, how do I feel about salesmen? I don't, I'm not a, a, a sales oriented person. It doesn't mean that people don't have the ability to sell you things to earn a profit. But however, like I said about cryptocurrency, it, how is that supposed to earn you a profit when it's supposed to be used as digital cash. See, when you try to come for me with this nonsense about capitalism and all of that, be prepared for my brutal response because you obviously didn't look up the definition of those terms and the concept of cryptocurrency in and of itself being very flawed as a security asset that no one wants to register, that most people don't know how it's created and that's not being valuated and given its value through transactions. But is actually being treated as a security asset that can be easily replicated or recreated by some kid on YouTube with a computer or a phone that's telling you, oh, this cryptocurrency is worth X amount of dollars and you have no way to verify that or authenticate it. And it's not in our economy. It's not flowing through our economic system. It's not being used in transactions at all, whether it be on an individual level or a economic level where a country is using this currency to buy imports of goods or services or products. So you have no idea to really say that this cryptocurrency or this token or this NFT or whatever the hell it is, is actually that valuable. You have no way to verify that. So when you come at me about capitalism, because I don't believe in cryptocurrencies being used as a security asset, that may or may not even exist to have any value at all. Because I told you I am not fond of salesmen. I just don't like salesmen. I just don't like their tactics. There are a lot of aggressive salesmen out here that just, just, ugh, it's intolerable. That has nothing to do with capitalism at all. You got to earn a profit however you got to do it. But I also have the right in a capitalistic society as a co consumer to also save my money to also avoid, you know, having my money taken from me by means of these stupid scams or by means of people price gouging, which is another concept that obviously most people forget about. Price gouging. There are reasons why we have standards and guidelines and rules and laws in place to keep our citizens, our economy, our investors from being taken advantage of. Just because someone wants to sell you something to earn a profit does not give them the right to scam money out of you either. Using something that is so easily replicated, you have no idea if it's authentic or fake, and it's certainly not being used to make transactions, so it's not gaining any value that way. When it's supposed to be cryptocurrency, digital currency. So, capitalism is often thought of as an economic system in which private actors own and control property and accord with their interest and demand and supply freely set prices and markets in a way that can serve the best interests of society. This is based on this finance and development article. And you guys can just look up what the definition of capitalism is, but everything that I've been saying is based on the definition of such. I literally just explained why cryptocurrency, if used the right way as digital cash could be, you know, the 
the, a great idea and a great concept, but it's not being used that way. I literally said that even if cryptocurrency is used on a larger scale by countries that are buying imports of goods and trades can help to increase that, the value of that cryptocurrency. I literally just said that that is the epitome of capitalism. So to say that I am anti-capitalistic because cryptocurrency should not be used as a security asset that no one wants to register, that no one can actually explain how it exists in the first place or how it's created or made authentically, and it's not getting its value the right way as a form of currency through transactions. By having it flow in our economy naturally and build up the value that way. In a capitalistic society that we live in, that, that, that has nothing to do with me not being pro-capitalist. I'm Everything I've said has been all about making sure that you understand every nation has its right to protect its citizens, investors, and its economy from collapsing because of a scam. That is capitalism. That best serves the best interests of the society. That freely set prices in markets. I literally talked about global trading. Hell, I did a whole video about Lebanon's economic collapse and how their money, the the LS, the LBP, has devalued because they couldn't even afford to buy the import of goods that they were purchasing with U.S. dollars, and it brought down the value of their LBP because now they have a shortage of U.S. dollars, which means that they're not able to dispense out U.S. dollars or help to supplement their deficit. That That is capitalism at its finest. No one wants to see their country's economy come to a collapse because you want to sit and promote MLM scams. No one wants to see that happen at all. How does anybody benefit from people implementing all these stupid ass scams that's taking money out of our economy, taking money from our investors, taking money from our banks and financial institutions, taking money out of our citizens and people who need money to live and survive because someone just wants to be greedy and they're only thinking about themselves. They're only thinking about them making a quick buck. That's not a profit, you're stealing. There's a difference. You're selling an idea or a concept that should not even be used in the manner that it's being used in. Instead of you actually selling a real stock or bond, you're selling cryptocurrencies that's supposed to be digital cash because you're so smart. This is not a, a security asset. It unfortunately has evolved into that because the people who came up with this cryptocurrency Bitcoin idea thought that it would just be easy to infiltrate it into the economy and not realizing that's not how that crap works. So they started selling it as a security asset and then wanted to decry it being decentralized because they created something they thought would just be easily accepted and widely accepted because of the depression and the economic crash. But then they forgot you can't force banks or institutions or merchants to accept some something called Bitcoin or cryptocurrency on this global scale like this and then put it in our economy as if people are going to widely use this all of a sudden overnight. That's not how it works. There's nothing wrong with having alternative forms of currency. The problem is, is when you're using it to your advantage and it's not to the benefit of the society at all. Or it's not to the benefit of people to be able to earn a profit because you're putting some crap out there that's not real or legitimate or authentic. Some kid made up from a YouTube video on their computer or their phone. And then they're telling people it's worth X amount of dollars and then people are losing their money to that nonsense while that developer or that scammer gets to pocket all of this US dollars. The very thing they keep telling you is all of a sudden being devalued. That's hypocritical. Either the dollar is using the value, losing its value or not. But why expect US dollars in exchange for fake cryptocurrency 
that you made up on your phone. Why not go devalue the Swiss franc? I'm just curious. Why not devalue any other form of currency? Why the U.S. dollar? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious to know that. Come on now. When you when when I have to prove a point, y'all know I don't have a problem looking stuff up and because I mean in all that getting get some understanding. It, it's not even a matter of a profit. I'm all for our you know everybody making a profit. I, I love making money, but I also love being able to preserve and not have to worry about someone trying to scam me out of money because they're a dumbass salesman that are just being greedy in their price gouging or they're overinflating the value of a good or service or product or just lying to you and telling you that they're offering you something where they're really not at the end of the day. There are a lot of scammers out there. There are a lot of MLM scammers all over the internet, all over YouTube. And the person that said that, all he does is promote MLM scams. There is nothing legitimate about anything that he promotes. And I have said that to him directly. And I will continue to say that because all of it is scams. Three or four of the scams that he has promoted on his channel have literally collapsed as scams because they are that. The end. That it's, it's not even a deep thought process with it. The fact that I can actually point out the fact that he is selling nothing or advertising nothing but scams. MLM scams. To me, it's very easy to notice. They all have the same pattern. Whether he's pissed off that I say that or not, I don't really give a damn. Because I'm not the one stealing money from people. I'm not the one committing wire fraud every day. You don't want people to look at things from a legal stance. Why? Because you don't want to get into any legal issues. You don't want to get into legal trouble. You're going to be. Because you keep promoting scams. That's something you choose to do. Why should people allow you to do that? Why should people be okay with you promoting a scam? The MLM method is one thing. It's a problem when it becomes a Ponzi scam and it's one-sided. And it only benefits the people at the top. I've never even been a big fan of multi-level marketing. I, I, I can't stand it. It's annoying and it's aggravating and involves a lot of sales and a lot of bamboozling of a lot of dumb things. It's not my forte anyway. I'm very concrete and realistic when it comes to finances. And I guess him saying I was being anti-capitalistic is his way of just saying, I don't want her to put attention on me because I know I promote nothing but MLM scams on my platform when that's all he does. That's not a matter of me tearing down your credibility. You've already done that by yourself. Because three or four of the things that you promoted in your videos that are on your channel that you have put up and posted and put available to the public. Three or four of those MLM scams have fallen as scams. That's not hard to prove. You don't like the law? Don't do illegal crap. But you don't get to pick and choose which laws you want to abide by. You don't get to pick and choose the moments you want to be humane and show that you, you care about people where well, you're just taking their money. You're putting them in situations where they're tying their money into things because of your influence. Where it ends up being a scam. And then your whole MO about it is, well, you know, you got to expect to lose money. Well, they wouldn't even know about it if you didn't promote it. How about that? If you did not promote this stupid scam, they would have never known about it and they would have never put their money into that nonsense. This is about a quick cash grab for you. For me, it's about a matter of integrity. It's about a matter of people not being scammed if they want to buy a good, a product, a service, because that's how sales work. You're actually offering people a good product or service on the other end in exchange for some form of currency. If they want to buy it, then they buy it. But it doesn't mean that they have to accept being scammed or having someone price gouge or just take more money from them, not caring about their livelihood, their families, their bills or anything else. Simply because you're being greedy and you want to be able to go out and travel the country on other people's dimes. You want to impress me with your so-called capitalistic mindset? 
Why don't you actually sell something legitimate that would not put you into legal trouble if you were reported? How about that? Because you wouldn't be able to explain yourself otherwise. I don't care about nothing you've written or none of that when you're in deep down on the inside. You say and do the things you say and do, not caring about people being scammed and then not caring about the consequences and the backlash that comes from that because you're sitting here making videos about nothing but MLM scams and not giving a crap about how it affects anyone else but yourself. So before you come at me about some anti-capitalistic anything, sweetheart, let me explain something to you. You better go read something for real. You wrote a whole book and you did not somehow look up the definition of capitalism or the definition of cryptocurrency or any law. Start with wire fraud. I, I, I encourage you. If you're going to read about a law, don't, don't act like it doesn't exist because it does. I don't think you want to face a federal judge in a federal court of law. I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you would really have the ability to really defend yourself if you were questioned about all of your videos, either on your YouTube channel, where you have promoted scams that have literally collapsed. But if you want to start with anything, why don't you start reading about wire fraud and then go from there and then holler at me when you actually understand the concept of cryptocurrency, capitalism, and any law involving those things. Securities laws, the wire fraud, just start with one. Start with one. Get some understanding in that before you sit here and try to douse someone on the idea of capitalism because they don't want to see people get scammed. They don't want to see their country's economy collapse. As a United States citizen and as an American, I don't want to see my fellow Americans lose their money to stupid scammers like you. To people who push out these dumb scams and MLM pyramids and they try to pass it off like they're doing something to help people make money. All you're doing is just shuffling around other people's money. That's it. You're giving them nothing in return. Selling cryptocurrency or selling digital currency or any form of currency has to be the silliest, dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Especially when that person is going to be exposed to that form of currency at some point, eventually. Because if it flows through our economy, there's going to come a time where you're going to go to the store. They're going to ask you if you want cash back in the form of cryptocurrency or do you want cash dollars? You want bills? You, how do you want it? It's going to become an option for us. So buying it is ridiculous. If I want pesos, I'll just exchange US dollars for pesos. I'm not going to buy it and just expect someone to give me ROI payments on that peso. It's pathetic. Please come to me when you actually have a fundamental understanding of what you're proclaiming you know about on your dumb platform that turns out to be nothing but scams. All right. I had to get that out there. So uh, the question has been asked about uh, where your dumb leader is. Well, I already said that before. Uh, that girl hiding. <laughs> she knows, she knows that it's in her best interest to stay off of social media and all of that. If she puts out a message, it's going to be craft, craft, carefully crafted and carefully worded because why fraud is still a thing. And she does not want to go to prison. She's, she's already got, it's already enough evidence on why fraud against her as it is, but like I've said in my previous videos, uh, look girl, you, you don't, you know, you don't want no federal issues. That's why she abides by those cease orders. That's why many of you are not getting payments like that. Like I said, Ponzi scams aren't even designed for everybody to get money, but she's certainly, you know, not going to be able to give many of you money because of the fact that she doesn't have the type of liquidity to give you these payments. Cause she literally said it was going to be every week and now it's not. And no one knows what's happening. And it's just pretty much a winging effect at this point. She's just winging it as they, her and her dumb husband and brother as they go along. They're just winging it. But the one thing they're trying to do is to keep people from panicking 
and from pulling out all of their money. Now, even if everybody were to do that, I mean, many of you are putting in requests to get money out and guess what? Um, it's being ignored and you're not getting your money. So aside from her potentially holding your money hostage <laughs> and harboring it, um, there's just no money to pay all of you. And the early investors are being paid because they got to hook them in. That's, that's kind of the method of Ponzi scams. They got to hook you in. All Ponzi scams don't collapse the same way. They just don't. Like I said, there's case laws. You can got, you guys can read case laws. And I'm talking about cases that have been tried in federal courts of other Ponzi scams that have lasted much longer than Novatech. Bernie Madoff scam lasted over 20 years. I think his went about 25 years. 20 to 25 years. So think about it. I mean, if you just have money flowing through it where you can still pay some of your investors just to kind of keep down the hush and the fuss, most people are going to just give up and say, you know what, I just I just let it go back towards whatever account you think you have because all the accounts are demo accounts. They're all fake. So, you know, there's, there's no real anything there. But if you think you're reinvesting something, most people are just going to do that because they're going to get tired of waiting. Or they're going to try another method and try to withdraw from a totally different demo account because they're all demo accounts. The end. But a lot of people are just not going to, they're not going to always just fight right away because like I said, the, the idea concept of being scammed, it's not some people want to accept. People don't want to feel stupid that they've been scammed. It's not a matter of a smart or stupid thing. Your scam promoters are dumb. I think they are. But there are some people who are just genuinely thought that this was, this was a, 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 a investment opportunity that can help them get some extra money. And they want their money back. And they're not getting to get back. And I think it's very cold hearted and, and, and careless to tell someone, you know, well, in this game, you expect to lose money. Well, no, because nothing you wrote out in those manuals or your websites or any of that says that I should be expecting to lose money. So, no, I don't. This ain't got nothing to do with the stock market. Pick and choose. Either it does and you're going to register everything or it doesn't. And then you're going to stop using that as a lame as excuse. So when people tell you don't invest more than what you can lose, remind them all your videos could be used as evidence for wire fraud. Now you want to keep telling me that crap or you want to actually help me get my money back. I can just report your dumb ass and be done with it because you're the one that's promoting it. Don't let your uplines get away with telling you that nonsense, knowing that it has nothing to do with stocks or a stock market. Nothing. None of this is connected to the stock market. Their server, their, their computer, fake software program, their platform is not even connected to a server that feeds in data from the stock markets because it's, it's not related. If you want to be deregulated, you don't use a regulated system as an excuse to explain why people are not getting money. It is highly hypocritical. So remind them why fraud is still a thing and you have a dozen videos about this stupid scam promoting and recruiting people for it. Keep telling me that nonsense if you want to. That's all y'all got to say. You ain't even got to threaten them. Like, oh, okay. I'm glad you said that. I recorded this call. <laughs> record that stuff. Record their behinds on these calls. Record their videos. Print screenshots. Get all that information in. And then you go to your state's prosecuting office, to your state's government agencies like FINRA that can issue cease orders. And then you have them include restitution, you file a lawsuit, you do what you got to do. Because legally, if you were brought into this and you had no idea that this was a scam, you'd rather be a victim than to actually be a perpetrator of it. Then it is what it is. And you will be able to prove that you were truly a victim. And you, you fell victim to this scam. But don't sit back and not say anything because you're not the only one involved in this. You have to remember, just because you can handle losing a couple thousand dollars, like what your caller keeps saying in his videos, Larry, oh, I can lose twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Everybody can't lose that type of money, you insensitive piece of crap. You're soulless. And he call yourself a Christian, and then you go say some stuff like that. What did Jesus ever tell somebody? Well, you know, I can afford to go two or three days without eating. I don't know about you. You should starve. Glut to that. 
My five fish and two body look, two fish and five bodily loaves of bread is I'm good with that. I don't know about you. No. No. Not one time have you ever seen in the Bible or even a, a, a true Christian be so cold hearted and callous and and so desensitized to the needs of other people. You are literally living in hypocrisy when you are cold hearted and soulless about your approach to someone being victimized in a scam and losing their money. And then you recruited them into this and you did not help them recover and recoup their funding. At the very least, for you dump up lines and promoters that keep promoting this, at the very least, talk to the people you recruited. I've said this before in a couple other videos. Sit these people down and have a real conversation with them. Talk to them and tell them this is what's happening. I don't care if it's your spouse, a child, parents, grandparents, a cousin, an aunt, uncle, whatever. Church members, your pastor, a doctor, a lawyer. Your degrees have nothing to do with you being scammed. Anybody can be scammed. But sit these people down and talk to them and say, listen, these cease orders are not a joke. They're real. And none of us want to go to court over any of this stuff if we would ever be named in a charge or a cease order for promoting this stuff. I don't, I, I did not know, but I, now that I know, here's how, these are some resolutions, ways we can resolve this. Make it plain and be honest and transparent for once in your damn life. You don't have to continue on with this farce and this ruse of blaming a stock market that is completely unrelated to something decentralized and deregulated. It's irrelevant. And it's not going to be good enough when other people who have lost twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 are not able to handle or cope with losing that, that amount of money. And then what if those persons go out and do something to themselves or to others, knowing that people have committed suicide from losing their money to a scam? Be careful about the things you say, not knowing the consequences that can really come about. You will be haunted in your sleep for many, many years to come. And I'm going to tell you that right now. God is not going to be happy with you knowing that you said something about someone losing twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 that you brought them into this scam, refused to be honest about the cease orders, refused to be honest about the, all the legal issues that Novatech is facing. And the ultimate fact that they're actually going to go to jail. They're going to prison. They're under investigations. The fact that you failed to be honest and to disclose that information. And then the person you recruited, they lose 25, 30,000. They end up hurting themselves or taking their own life. You're not going to have any peace at all. You think being up at three o'clock in the morning is bothering you now. Wait till you go days, weeks, months, and years, and you waking up every every morning at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're not going to be able to sleep because one of your loved ones or family members and friends took their life because you pulled them into a scam and you did not give them all the information that they needed to get out of it, to help them with options to recover their damn money. You will lose sleep. You will not have peace in your mind. And if the law doesn't catch you, God sure will on Judgment Day. It's going to be a rude awakening for you.